Hi guys, welcome to TechBase. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 25H2 build for the dev channel, which is the build 26200.5742. In this video, we're going to talk about all the new features that were added, the fixes and changes that Microsoft is applying to this new 25H2 build. So of course, if you want more videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. First of all, Microsoft is announcing that they have have redesigned the mobile device companion, basically this start menu sidebar, with an updated layout that lets you access more right from the start. So you're also going to have a screenshot because it hasn't fully rolled out to me yet, but you can now scroll to access more recent activity items so you can stay on top of updates from your mobile devices. Also users will be able to access messages, calls, photos, mobile app updates, and more from this updated layout. And this works for both Android and iOS. Microsoft is also working more and more on moving settings from the old control panel of Windows 11 to the new settings app. So I think the control panel is slowly but surely closing into being obsolete because we now have a lot of time and language settings moved from control panel to the new settings app and also some more keyboard settings that were moved. So let's go over them. First of all in settings, time and language and then date and time. You can now add additional clocks under the show time and date in the system tray and this will basically add all these clocks in the notification area so you can see them from here that is pretty nice and also we're going to be able to see them in the tooltip when hovering over the clock in the taskbar so for example let me add an additional clock let's add utc90 and then the display name clock one and then let's add another one the us mountain standard time the clock two and then click on change and now whenever we hover over this you're going to see all these clocks and also when we click on it we're going to see all our added clocks here so i think that is pretty nice under additional settings you're also now going to be able to change the time server from here just click on change and change the server if you want. That is also a nice addition that was basically moved from the old control panel. Also, the formatting settings for date and time have been moved from settings, time and language, language and region to settings, time and language, date and time, and you should be able to change this from here as well. Under language and region, you're also going to be able to change the number and currency format under the region settings. So you should notice these settings on your device after updating to this build. Also, if you'd like to enable Unicode UTF-8 or worldwide language support, there is now a toggle for this under settings time and language, language and region, and under the language settings that will allow you to do this. Also under additional settings, you can now copy current user language and region settings to welcome screen and system account, as well as new user accounts. I think that is also a nice addition. In addition to this in the settings app, Microsoft has moved some more keyboard settings from the old control panel to settings, for example, inside accessibility. And then if we scroll down to keyboard, we now have the settings for the character repeat or delay rate. I think that is pretty nice. Also under accessibility and then text cursor, the settings for the cursor blink rate has been moved to here. So you should notice it down here. It also has an explanation. Basically, keyboard character repeat or delay rate is used to control the character repeat duration and repeat frequency. And the cursor blink rate is used to control the cursor blinking frequency. Related to some other changes, Microsoft is saying in their blog post that they have also updated some dialogues to match the Windows 11 design principles, including the dialogue for when an app can't open. So I've tried this yesterday. I have here a few apps that cannot open but that dialogue is not showing up it showed up once it then crashed it didn't show after that so this is the old one and you should get a new one but i think this is pretty much bugged at the moment talking about fixes in this build related to the file explorer microsoft fix an issue where some of the icons and details preview and navigation panes of file explorer were improperly mirrored when using arabic or hebrew display languages they also fix an issue where the tooltip in file explorer might unexpectedly stay visible fix an issue where duplicating a tab in a maximized window inside file explorer would result in a black flash. They also improved the support for text scaling on desktop icons, addressing an issue which could lead to overlapping icons and text. They also fixed a couple cases where Narrator was unexpectedly not announcing actions in File Explorer when using the Create New Library option and when expanding details while copying files. And they also made some more performance improvements, particularly to help the performance of launching cloud files and loading context menus. Related to the Start menu, Microsoft fixed an issue for insiders with the new Start menu, where they might unexpectedly see a category generated for every letter of the alphabet with blank icons when opening the start menu in the all section after updating to the previous build. And they also fixed an issue where Visual Studio wasn't showing in the correct category. Related to the task manager, Microsoft fixed a few issues impacting task manager reliability, including a recent issue which could cause task manager to freeze when going to the performance section for some insiders. And they also fixed a few issues impacting accessibility, including adjusting minimum field sizes, improving contrast for the column headers on the details page when contrast 
themes are enabled and addressing a focus issue with the select columns dialog on the details page. Related to input, Microsoft fixed an underlying issue where if you try to type Chinese with an IME after copying something with Control plus C, it could result in the first character getting dropped. And they also fixed an issue where if you were typing on the touch keyboard with the Kangi or Bopo Emoji or Japanese IME, it wouldn't work if you had switched to using the previous version of the IME. Related to settings, they fixed an issue where if you attempt to add a security key under settings, accounts, and then sign in options, it could result in settings crashes. And some other fixes fix an underlying issue with DAO360.dll resulting in some apps crashing after the last two builds. And they also fix an issue causing a small number of insiders to experience bug checks with system service exception in the latest builds. There is also a new known issue for the start menu. For insiders with the new start menu, the layout may temporarily show a smaller start menu. For example, six columns of pinned apps instead of eight. This issue will be resolved shortly and the larger layout will be restored as announced by Microsoft. So this is basically the latest build for 25H2, the latest dev channel build with some improvements, fixes, and new features. For more information, of course, don't forget to check out the article below or the official Microsoft blog post. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was your man from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.